Hey, good Thursday morning, everybody. BAM weather meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a forecast update on what will likely become Tropical Storm Imelda as we work into this weekend. Right now, it's just a weak tropical disturbance uh, that passed through Puerto Rico yesterday, working into the Dominican Republic. But the latest trends with the overnight model guidance and the morning model data trying to move this storm more towards the Carolina coast, increasing potential that there could be an impact of a tropical cyclone as we work into early next week for the Carolinas. And so I want to talk about the latest trends, the expected impacts with this storm, the timing, and then also want to talk about some of the variables that we're keeping an eye on because there's multiple different influences that will ultimately determine the exact track and the intensity of this storm. It produces a lot of risk in the forecast. You know, at this distance, four or five days out, most of the time model data is in a little bit of a better agreement, trying to trend towards some better agreement, but not quite there yet. And I want to talk about why as we go throughout this video. Starting out, this is technically called Invest 94L right now. It's a non-tropical uh, disturbance out here moving through the, the Dominican Republic this morning. It will continue to push north into the east towards the Palmas as we work over the next 24 to 48 hours, and in that time should develop into a tropical storm, but it's not even named yet. Now, we do have Humberto out there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. If we take a look at that, uh, it's expected to develop into a major hurricane, but as as you can see here with these tracks, not expected to get close to the United States. It should stay well out to sea. However, its exact track will likely ultimately impact how Imelda evolves over the coming days. The trend with Humberto is a little bit slower, a little bit further east. That would limit its influence on Imelda and ultimately make it easier for Imelda to work towards the U.S. coast. If we take a look here at the area where this storm likely develops over the next two to three days. It's going to be in the Bahamas or just east of Florida. I, I think personally, just looking at the data this morning, it likely develops into a tropical storm somewhere in here as we work into tomorrow evening or into tomorrow night, certainly by Saturday morning. So that is what we are keeping an eye on as things stand right now. In terms of the ensemble guidance and uh, the overall forecast consensus, these are the last four runs of the multi-model ensemble, the European, the American, the Canadian. You can see it has been ticking west pretty consistently over the past four runs, moving closer and closer to the U.S. coast. But you may say, okay, well, it's still way away from the Carolinas at this point. It is, but keep in mind, we've gotten two additional sets of data of hurricane models that have come in this morning uh, since this has run, and they have continued to tick further and further west. In fact, if we take a look at the evolution of the operational or the deterministic weather models, uh, these tracks that you see here are just the different various outcomes in terms of where Imelda would track. This was last, or, or this was on. Uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, you can see all of these kept Imelda way off the shore. Here is a look at the runs yesterday afternoon, actually even weaker and further south and slower. Take a look at how different the models now are with the latest morning run. Substantially further west, not curving it further to the east. In fact, uh, this is even different than what the overnight models looked like. Uh, those models split with half of them moving inland and half of them moving out to sea. Now almost every single model that we have here is making an impact somewhere between Georgia and North Carolina. Uh, that is a staggering trend just over the past 24 to 12 hours or so, and it's certainly not one that we can ignore. And so we did a deep dive this morning trying to figure out, okay, why is this trending the way that it is? Is this realistic? And ultimately, what will the intensity of this storm actually end up being? If we take a look here, this again was the multi-model ensemble last night. This shows you a little bit more of the spread rather than just one line. This shows you the various outcomes. You can see very high confidence here. These oranges and reds, very high confidence that this storm is going to work through here over the next couple of days. Where model data had been diverging is there was a set of ensemble members that were moving towards the Carolinas in here. And then there was a set that was recurving out to sea over here. 
the trend with the latest data that's again not necessarily reflected on this map has been more and more so towards this western idea i would say increasing potential for a landfall in either south carolina or north carolina as we work into early next week likely late monday into monday night so what is the deal with this trend i want to talk about the different influences and what i am keeping an eye on over the next couple of days if we take a look here the old run of the european model Humberto was very, very close to a meltup. In fact, what ended up happening is what we call the Fujiwara effect, where the stronger storm began to pull and kind of slingshot Imelda further east out to sea. The latest run is so much slower with Humberto that it allows for less influence and for the steering winds aloft to have more of an impact rather than the outflow from Humberto. So the further apart these systems are, the more likely that Imelda will track northward towards the coast rather than curving out to sea. Here's the influence of what typically happens. If, especially if Humberto was the faster of the hurricanes, you would almost get this counterclockwise clockwise rotation. They would rotate around each other and that would slingshot Imelda further to the east. On the newest data, with the slowdown of Humberto, that is not happening. Now, there's another factor as well that has been influencing the forecast, and especially with the American data. If we take a look here, previous runs had an upper-level low in the United States, the one that's been bringing a lot of rain to the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic in the short term, kind of staggering and slowing down in the Carolinas, pretty far east. It allowed for the winds aloft to be more out of the southwest and curving Imelda further to the east away from the coast. The latest runs have been trending weaker, further west with this upper level low, which is allowing for the Bermuda high and the southerly flow from that to push Imelda towards the coast. And so the trend in both Humberto and with the upper level low is favorable to steer Imelda towards the coast, which again giving us increasing confidence to say there will likely be a landfall in the U.S. as we work into early next week. What about model intensity? We haven't talked a lot about that. We've talked a lot about where the storm is actually going to go. There's a major spread in the model guidance right now in terms of how strong the storm is going to be. Uh, some of the hurricane data, the HAFS A model, trying to get up to a Category 4, Category 5 storm, I think that's insane. I think it's way too strong right now. You can see there are, there are model pieces of model data that keep this at a tropical storm, some that get to a Cat 1, 2, 3 hurricane. And so wanted to look at just the overall setup to determine which of these is the most realistic. And just based off of this alone, I am very skeptical of a major hurricane. What you're looking at here all the reds that you see, uh, this is what we call wind shear. Wind shear tears storms apart. It prevents them from trending very strong. And there is a ton of wind shear along the U.S. southeast coast as the storm approaches late Monday and into Tuesday. To me, that will limit the higher end threat of a Category 4 or Category 5 storm, probably a Category 3 storm as well. With that being said, the ocean waters are very warm. All the oranges and the reds that you see here, that is above normal tropical cyclone heat potential anomaly. I think that this storm could intensify a little bit faster than what some of the data would indicate. And so rather than going towards the super high solution or the super low end solution, I think somewhere in the middle is more likely. Uh, I would favor a category one storm, maybe could get up to a category two. I think that beyond that, it's going to be challenging. But uh, I think if I had to produce a range right now, it'd be a high-end tropical storm to a low-end Category 2 storm, uh, right now favoring kind of at that Category 1 level as the storm makes landfall. Uh, to break this down and to time it out for you all here, uh, I'm going to show you all the HMON model. And this is going to give you an idea of how this storm is expected to evolve. You can see the time in the UTC time up here in the top left. So this is Sunday morning. Uh, you can see certainly a tropical storm at this point. As we continue to go throughout the day on Sunday, the storm will intensify. 
getting close to Category 1 hurricane strength by the time we work into Monday morning, and then likely a Category 1 storm off the east coast of South Carolina as we work into Monday afternoon. This particular model makes landfall in eastern South Carolina. That's probably pretty reasonable on Monday afternoon as a Category 1 storm. Now, I, I think that it could be a tick too fast. I think it's probably more Monday evening into Monday night, but somewhere around then, uh, I do think there can be a hurricane landfall somewhere in eastern South Carolina or far southern North Carolina. And so these areas definitely need to be preparing as we work over the next several days. And here's our official forecast map with all of that in mind. So if we take a look here, you can see uh, you know, right now, just a low, likely into a tropical storm by Friday night, stays at tropical storm strength as we go throughout Sunday, category one storm by Monday morning, making landfall in eastern South Carolina as a category one storm by Monday evening. Confidence still lower than normal at this distance, but I'd say maybe with some of the latest data that came in right before this, that confidence increasing a little bit. In terms of areas that need to be monitoring and preparing, if you are in South and North Carolina, you need to be preparing now for potential impacts for a Category 1 storm if you're along the coast from both wind, storm surge, and rain. And then inland, I'm very concerned about very heavy rain. If you're in the green areas, you need to still be monitoring for trends. A further west tick would bring into play more of Georgia, maybe eastern Florida. I think Florida is a lower end potential, but at least still be monitoring this storm. In terms of rainfall potential, I'm going to show you the European model just as a generalized idea with this storm. And what you're going to see is when all is said and done, you know, certainly some very heavy rainfall totals possible in here. Widespread, you know half a foot or more of rain, maybe even especially inland, because as this storm converges into the Appalachians, keep in mind that can actually enhance some of the rain. And so I think the flooding concerns can move well inland into the Western Carolinas and into Western Virginia as well as the storm produces a ton of moisture. And so this is not going to be a storm where I think it's limited to coastal impacts. I'm concerned about the impacts and the flooding issues all the way towards the Appalachians as well. well. We'll have more fine-tuned details as we get a little bit closer, but that is the forecast thought for right now. I know this is a longer forecast video, but I just wanted to break this down as much as I possibly could. Thanks, guys, and have a great rest of your day.